Hello everybody, I'm Garilla64, and today we're talking about Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, that arcade game starring those three lovable goofballs. And Dr. Eggman. <laughs> now since I already introduced the video before the video even started, I'm not gonna do it again because that would just be awkward. But you know, when I was writing this, I failed to realize that with me at the helm, it's gonna be awkward no matter what I do. <laughs> oh, you think that's funny? Oh, well, that's good, because it's a joke, much like all your plants. Seriously, dude, if you just took the time to really learn about your enemies, maybe you'd be able to stop them. And speaking of learning, today's sponsor, Skillshare, is actually a great place to do that. You're not going to find any classes on how to stop blue hedgehogs here, so Dr. Eggman might be out of luck, but if you're interested in honing your creative writing skills, your graphics design prowess, or perhaps even your budding music career, and you're not sure how to go about doing that, Skillshare has got you covered. The process is as simple as visiting the website, signing up for an account, and then searching for what you want to learn. When looking for classes, the site is totally upfront about how long each one will take, which if you're like me and have either no time or no attention span, having that information helps a lot when planning out your day. You can even sort the available classes by their length and premium status to make narrowing down the perfect class for you a little bit easier. When I was browsing, this class, Storytelling 101, Character Conflict, Context, and Craft, being taught by Daniel Jose Older stuck out to me, and it wasn't just because of its alliterative title. When I'm writing, no matter it be a rewritten story or something totally original, I always have trouble transitioning from fun character moments to actual plot, so hearing the perspective of an actual published author sounds like the perfect place to get some pointers. There are plenty of free classes, but if you want access to an unlimited amount of them for less than $10 a month, which literally feels like a steal, you can join with a premium membership, which also nets you the ability to download classes to watch anywhere, anytime. And if you'd like to test out premium without having to pay a single dime, the first 1,000 people to click my link, which can be found in the description, get two months for free. Do you know how much you can learn in two months? I can tell you it's a heck of a lot more fun and useful than the stuff you'll learn in two months of schooling, that's for sure. If anything I just mentioned piqued your curiosity, make sure you go check out Skillshare at the link in the description today. And thank you again for sponsoring this video, that was very nice. Now, Sega Sonic the Hedgehog was a Japanese arcade machine that never saw the light of day anywhere else after its release in 1993. You might be thinking, well, why didn't they try porting it to consoles? Well, that is because the game has an interesting method of control. Instead of a joystick, you get a ball. Roll the ball and watch him run, it's really quite a sight. You also get a jump button and then that's it. Go have a ball with that ball, I don't know. With that in mind, you might be wondering how on earth I got to play this game under those circumstances, and the answer is... not perfect, but it works well enough, much like the game itself. Using MAME, the arcade emulator, and some tips and tricks from Tracker TD's video, you can play on a real joystick, and... oh joy. I'm making it out to be a little bit worse than it actually is. Sure, they look like chickens running around with their heads cut off, but it only really feels like that when you first start the game. Once you get used to it, it becomes a lot more manageable aside from one or two other times throughout the entire 15 minute run, but uh, yeah, that's just about it. It's pretty short, so it's not that offensive. With that in mind, you have to remember that this thing was also created to guzzle coins, so some sections are probably designed in the way they are to make you die, so you have to keep putting in money. But regardless of that and the awkward control scheme, trying to judge this game as one would judge a console game doesn't really make sense to me because they are not trying to be the same thing. That being said though, I definitely want to point out that this is one of the main reasons I don't like arcade games. Just think about how crane games are like literally created so that you are not supposed to win 90% of the time. Yeah, it's kind of dumb sauce. Now as per norm, I'd like to take a minute to highlight the story of this epic tale. From what I can gather, since it's all in Japanese, basically Sonic, Mighty, and Ray are having the legitimately worst day possible thanks to Dr. Eggman. And the doctor is living for it. He just kicks back in his dimly lit evil lair and watches them get burned to a crisp, drowned, and electrocuted. Pretty harsh, to be honest. I feel even worse for Mighty and Ray, though, since this is their first ever adventure, and for one of them, it's one of their only two. Thankfully, they were cut some slack when they got out of Mania, but before that, this torment was all Ray ever knew. The game begins with your playable character getting captured by Dr. Eggman in a vehicle that is at the same time faster than Sonic and also slower. From there, the trio has to navigate an entire island that's falling apart at the seams. Eggman Island looking a lot more like Apple Product Island, if you know what I mean. Though with how sloppy Eggman has proven to be over the years, his entire private island being in total disarray doesn't really surprise me. <laughs> Dude, wait, no, come on, don't be a sore sport. <laughs> Subverting expectations, the first level isn't green, or a hill. It's a fire stage, which is just about as far away from Green Hill as you can get, I think. 
Volcanic Vault mainly sees Sonic and Co. getting chased by lava flows. This being the introduction of the game, it's really simple and paints the picture of how this game is going to play out really well. In this one stage, you see almost all of the important gimmicks, those being running away from Thing and waiting in place for other Thing to get out of your way so you can keep running away from previous Thing. Also, climbing happens occasionally and gets more in-depth later. You're also shown the downright gorgeous sprites and animations as the tortured trio is flung, dropped, burned, and slammed into various set pieces. Some of my personal favorite animations being displayed by Ray because I guess he's just a huge goof. Just look at that face. He radiates huge goof energy. Stage 2 sees our trio on ice on Icy Isle. So they usually say that if you get trapped under ice like this, it's almost impossible to get back out before you drown. But fortunately enough for our trio, they escape, but the ice decides to take revenge. Not having claimed its victim quota for today, it starts flinging itself at the heroes relentlessly as they're forced to dodge spears, jump over pits, and show off their upper body strength in the monkey bars. Also, this just in, Ray is a cheater? Please point and laugh at him? At the end of every stage, you're also graded on how many rings you pick up, each one also restoring some of your lost health as you collect it. The rings are placed in such a way that it's probably impossible to get them all in one playthrough to encourage replaying the game as much as possible, yet more coin magnet tactics, but uh, I'm fine however just being sad forever. Now we're coming up on one of the worst levels in the game, Desert Dodge, which coincidentally is something I wish I could do to this desert, but sometimes you just gotta face your problems head on or die trying, and suffice to say, you will die. Even worse, this desert comes complete with the Everything is a Bottomless Pit DLC, so your gameplay here usually just looks like this. There's also a surprise visit from our favorite boss from 8-Bit Sonic 2, the Antlion, and I guess Mighty just belongs to him now. The rules of the desert are harsh, my friends. Ray also learns that he's not in Kansas no more, and all three take a nice bath in quicksand. Ah, uh, just feel that nice coarse sand in your eyes, reminding you that you're alive and that everything is terrible forever. Once you get past the first part, it's really not so bad. Just keep me as far away from those flying millipedes as possible. Ugh. Trap Tower is something you might recognize if you played Sonic Mania Plus. The new pinball bonus game takes the music and inspiration from the Eggman sprites found in this very game to deliver a much welcomed reference 24 years later. Now, just because you're grooving to that level theme doesn't mean you can let your guard down because it's called Trap Tower for a reason. That reason being that there are traps everywhere. At first, I thought you had to jump over these when they were down, or maybe hit them while they were up to knock them down, but it's basically just another one of those wait till they're out of the way obstacles. I both overthink and underthink everything I do, and I'm losing my mind. There's also a short ladder climbing segment in this one, but other than that, this is a very short level, and I'm wondering if at some point this was meant to be the first stage or something? But alas, I will never know at the time of creating this video, but I'm sure plenty of people will let me know in the comments that I am wrong and stupid and also bad at everything I do. Thank you. Upon exiting the tower, a rogue machine decides that it misses Sonic and Co. already and erupts out of the building after you, welcoming you to Landslide Limbo. This is a mountainous stage that'll test your reaction time with its sharp turns, jumps, and ability to quick step before the quick step was ever a thing. It all then culminates with a showdown against the crazy saw blade machine on top of the mountain, and it's honestly pretty sick. This is yet another short stage, but I think the small mini-boss encounter makes up for it to some degree. With that though, the trio delves further into the island to come across the worst area in the entire game. Wild Waterway. Gotta say though, I absolutely love the names of the levels in this game. I am a sucker for alliteration and it's used in such fun ways here. This stage starts by lulling you into a false sense of security. Of course, you've got the immediacy of something chasing you, which gets you going, but you're slower than normal because you're underwater, and it actually makes it easier to control, so surprisingly, this isn't the bad part I've been alluding to. After hanging out with some nice sea turtles and purging the water of these unholy beasts, you climb up a ladder and see river rapids rushing right on by. Thankfully, there are some platforms also being swept away in the carnage, but good luck trying to stay on them. I don't know how much more difficult this would have been on a trackball, or how less difficult it would have been, but to me, this part of the level looks like one of those mandatory insert more money if you want to finish the game moments. I mean, for real, look at how much health is shaved off from falling into the water just once. All I'm saying is no matter how hard I tried, I died here at least twice every single time I played this. So what's worse, Wild Waterway or Desert Dodge? Well, from a logical perspective, I'd say Wild Waterway, but my brain is reminding me that Desert Dodge had giant flying millipedes, so I'd much rather drown than deal with any of that noise. If you manage to make it through that one, the finale of your adventure awaits. It's Eggman's Tower. I guess we're just throwing the alliteration out the window now. What a bummer. 
I mean, you could have called it like Eggman Empire or something at least. I mean, we already had a tower level if your memory lasts more than four minutes. Maybe you remember that. This here is the ultimate challenge of running and then stopping and then running again. These spiky gates are either the bane of your existence or a fun obstacle to blow by if you've got a good rhythm going. But man, if you approach these the wrong way, you are dead. There is no exception about it. You will be craving the warm embrace of those millipedes at that point. These are really your biggest threats, though. Once you pass by them, unharmed or otherwise, there's a few collapsing floor segments that are a total non-issue, and then you stroll right up to Eggman's gamer pad to confront him. Unfortunately, he doesn't want you to snag any of the Sonic G fuel he's been trying to scalp on eBay, so he engages the self-destruct switch and runs off. You then have mere seconds to escape the treacherous tower before it explodes with you inside, and you either do or you don't. It's like a choose-your-own-adventure game. Sonic's fate is in your hands. I'm way too good at the game to let him die, though, so it's more like the illusion of choice. Ah, uh, yeah. Looks like, as usual, you're the one with egg on your face. Alrighty, now that, that guy is gone, I can finally finish the video without feeling all self-conscious. One of the things that initially drew me to this game, aside from its visuals, was the multiplayer aspect. Co-op games are kind of my bread and butter when it comes to gaming, since I'm so horrible at most games that playing online competitively just makes me sad. So I kind of got to jump on these things when I have the chance. Unfortunately, living in the times we are now, I wasn't able to get anyone to come play this with me, but I can assure you it would have been a very chaotic and fun 15 minutes or so. For now, here's footage of Sonic's get-rich-quick scheme that uses Ray as a squirrel shield to slow down the rubber-banding AI of the giant scary obstacle in Volcanic Vault. Who would have thought that sacrificing your co-op partner was the true meta of this game? For as simple as this game is, I can't help but love it. Sure, it's got some moments designed to make you angrily fumble around in your pocket for another quarter, but it's so entertaining to see these little mighty beans running to and fro all over the place that all my issues just kind of melt away. Whether it be with friends or without, make sure to give this one a try because I think it's something special. <laughs> Oof, alright, that was a video. Uh, yeah, if anyone's wondering where Carlos DS is, it's, um, it's in the works. Sorry, the things got a little bit messed up and we had to push it back a little bit. Of course, you know, when I definitively say, hey, it's coming out next week and it doesn't, I'm sure people are a little bit curious about that. But anyway, if you see people begging for it in the comments and they didn't watch this far, feel free to let them know what I just said. It'll be great. Uh, but anyway, if you like this video and you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell, follow my Twitter, and join the Discord to keep up with more Sonic reviews and other things that aren't Sonic reviews, because I do a lot of things. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to my current supporters who are Common CJ, Chaotic Mercenary, Danny Dauber, Motor Mouse V2, Royal Blueburn, Crazy Sean DX, Raiden Still Plays, Chaos, Cosmic Mushroom, Ty Little Tech Guy, Jaded Indolent, Jeremy, Lucas Tallman, Mega Traffic Cone, Crystal, and on Patreon we have John the Real Wawa Luigi and Rob Morrison. Thanks to every single one of you and everyone in the $1 tier, because you're really helping me out a lot by doing this. If you want access to some exclusive blooper reels, like you can see for this video up in the corner, or other things sometimes, like special stuff in the Discord, please go ahead and click that join button beneath the video, or check out my Patreon at the card up at the top of the video again. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.